How you doing guys? Malik over at Modern Pawn. Today we're going to be talking about a few self-defense pistols. A couple of them are, are relatively new on the market. Uh, one in particular being the Glock 43 right here. Uh, the 42 has been out for a little bit. We're going to do a little rundown on the Glock 42 versus the 43. And what we're going to use as a bit of a baseline is the Glock 19. First off, my my this is my personal 42. Uh, when they, they came out, I bought one. I, I shot it. I liked it a lot. Uh, I think it's a very convenient size. Um, it is on the verge, in my opinion, of barely small enough to fit in the back pocket. Now, I, I carry this, and some people may go, oh, I shouldn't do that. I, I use this as a convenience carry pistol. Uh, when I don't have the time or I don't necessarily am, am ready to put on a holster and a belt and all that stuff, I'll take my, my wallet, I'll move my wallet from my right pocket to my left pocket, back pocket, and I'll take my the, the 42 and literally just put it in my back pocket. Um, it prints a little bit, uh, I don't know if you can see that, it prints a little bit and it barely comes out the top, but if I have my shirt untucked, you don't see it, it's not noticeable, uh, it, and it's not that inconvenient. It's not terribly comfortable to sit on, so if I get in the car, I'll normally take it and put it in the center console of my Suburban. Uh, but, walking around, I could walk around all day with this in my back pocket, it doesn't bother me at all. Uh, as far as the weight and the size goes, I think it's a very, very comfortable back pocket carry. Now, I have a, one of the other guys here at the shop will carry the same pistol in the front pocket. He'll take keys from one pocket and move it over to the other. He puts his phone in his back pocket, which I don't like necessarily to do, and he rocks it in the front pocket uh, of his blue jeans. For me, personally, a horizontal cut pocket, it doesn't fit too well in the front pocket. I think it's a little slow to retrieve. Uh, I don't wear my pants necessarily very loose or very tight, kind of, I would say, normal uh, cut on my blue jeans. I think the back pocket, it can easily be removed and not draw a lot of attention uh, if you had to, you know, stealthily pull it out of the back pocket. So, when I bought this, that's what I had in mind. It wasn't my everyday carry, uh, bread and butter self-defense pistol like my 19 is. Uh, if I'm going to holster up, I'm normally holstering up with a 19. The 42 though, is very nice, lightweight, compact uh, 380. Okay guys, what we have here, Glock 42, Glock 43, and your Glock 19. You have a 380 and 9 mils. So caliber wise, there is a difference caliber wise. Let's talk about that just for a second. If you were to look at a standard 380 load, uh, 90 grain Hornady critical defense, you're looking at about a 200 foot pounds of energy out of a pistol like this. And these pistols right here, if you were to use a similar load, say 115 grain Hornady Critical Defense, you're at about a 320 foot-pounds of energy. So there is a significant difference, guys, between a 380 and a 9 millimeter. It's not a, a minute difference in, in stopping power. There is a little bit of a difference. Now, with that being said, 200 foot-pounds of energy with a 90 grain jacketed hollow point of a high quality, a 380 I think is enough to defend yourself with. I don't think you will be underpowered. Um, I think you're you're in these situations. You're trying to uh, in self-defense. You're trying to stop aggression. You're not necessarily trying to uh, have an instant kill like you would if you were using a hunting rifle. So again, I think this is enough firepower to defend yourself with. And now, with that, you've got six rounds of ammunition six rounds of ammunition, and 15 rounds of ammunition. So it, in capacity-wise, there is a significant difference between the 42, 43 series and the 19. Uh, that's a lot, of, a lot of difference right there. Uh, six plus one versus 15 plus one. So really like a, a total seven capacity versus a total 16 capacity. Double, it's, it's almost hard to tell visually the, the, the thickness difference between the 43 and the 42, but there is, there is a, just like a 60, 60 thousandths, I think is what it is, difference between the two. It's not a huge difference in width. 
when we talk about length, let me let me square these two up. The two, th there is a length difference in the in the 43. Uh, it's you're looking at uh, 4.3 inches versus 4.1 inches, so about a quarter inch length difference. And then in the total height difference, almost uh, almost nothing really. I think when you when you get the magazines in there, this one's got the little pinky extension. Uh, you're like right, ex almost exactly in the length difference. When you look at the actual slides, the width of this metal versus the width of this metal, this slide on the 43 is much chunkier than the 42. And I think that what that does is it adds a considerable amount of weight on the 43 versus the 42. The, the 43 is an 18 ounce pistol versus a 13.7 ounce unloaded pistol. So 18 versus 13.7. Uh, you're, you're looking at 4.3 ounce difference between the two unloaded. When you go to a loaded pistol, you get 17, on the 43, you get 17.3 ounces versus 22.4 ounces. So right at a five ounce loaded weight difference. Now that's over a quarter pound. In my opinion, that's where the pocket carry the the 43 I think is a little uh, it edges out the 40 the 42 edges out the 43 in pocket carry the 42 being a little lighter and a little smaller in every dimension it's just a little bit smaller so if you're really trying to get it in a cargo pocket a back pocket a front pocket maybe just t a little waistband carry the 43 is a little bigger than the 42 and, and it's a significant enough I think to make a difference so when we look at the 43 versus the 19 when you start getting them close to each other it it kind of looks like we're going from a 42 to a 43 it, it is an intermediate gun now you do pick up some width you pick up let's square these off at the back here you pick up a little bit longer barrel more significant the 42 versus the 43 and weight wise you go from a 23 ounce 23.6 ounce pistol to an 18 ounce pistol so you're at 5.6 ounce difference unloaded in these two guns now loaded the difference becomes more obvious because the 19 has such a higher ammunition capacity. With standard loads, you're at 30 ounces loaded, and on the 43, you're at 22.4 ounces. So seven and a half ounce loaded weight difference, so a half pound difference between the two. Now again, if weight is a concern, you know, you're, you're, there's a big jump from here to here uh, on weight, size, everything like that. So let's get a little closer comparison of the 42 versus the 19. It, it's a lot more obvious when you start looking at it like this. You know, the, the size of the slide, everything, it's, it's much smaller. This is definitely, I think, an in, an in between these two. It's not just um, a parallel product to the 42. The 43 definitely, I think, fits in the middle of this Okay, setup. guys, what we're gonna be shooting is Hornady Critical Defense and the 380 we're gonna be using 90 grain FTX bullets for the 380 from Hornady, critical defense. And for the 9mm, we're going to be using the same thing in a 115. So the 9mm Hornady critical defense 115 FTX. I think this is a good quality common ammunition. So that's what we're going to use. We're not, not going to use anything exotic like these uh, ultralight solids or you know mag safes or anything like that. Very standard loads for both the 380 and the 9mm.
Jo. Real quick impression as far as felt recoil, the 380 was definitely lighter on recoil, but you're using a less powerful cartridge. The, the 380 uh, Glock 42, a little lighter on the hands. Now the 43, by no means would I consider that snappy or abusive or, or abrasive or anything like that. Now if you have a really new shooter, someone that, that might be recoil sensitive, you might want to think about a 42. If you want a little bit more power, the 43 is definitely has got it. Uh, the 19, a very comfortable bread and butter gun. I'm not not worried about that one at all. The the size of the grip, the little bit bigger grip footprint in the hand makes the 19 feel extremely comfortable. But honestly, the 43 was quite comfortable to shoot. 42 being the most comfortable, lighter bullet, less power. But for the increase in power, the 43, I think, felt very, very nice. It, it, it shot smooth. It didn't uh, sting or bite. I think I could pick up the pace if I needed to as far as rapid fire goes um, and, and probably keep the sights on target. I, I, I was pretty impressed with the 43. Very soft shooting, very comfortable to shoot. This is Malik Afram, guys. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. It really helps promote the channel and, and get the word out there. Check us out on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash modernpawnandguns, and check out our website, modernpawnandguns.com. Stay safe.